Hey everyone, Pupsker here, and I'm now back from Tenocon. I was physically there, handful of people said hi, got pictures, it was a fun time, and I'm back home. And that means let's talk about the Tenocon 2023 recap. In the background, we have whispers in the walls. In theory, the next big, well, after the October, the next next big update, I think. So there's a lot that was shown off. Let's go over one by one, going up at their 20, 23 Tenocon recap page. So they started off with the heirloom collection launch. Now there's a lot of controversy around the heirloom collection launch and we'll talk about that shortly. Mag and Frost have been iconic members of the Warframe universe since the Tenocon first awakened. These all new heirloom collections commemorate and honor their 10 years spent defending the origin system and the 10 year anniversary of Warframe. These heirloom collection features new signature Warframe skins for Mag and Frost available to use on the base Warframes and Primes, as well as profile accolades, platinum, regal Aya, and a completely new customization category, Cygnus. Learn more about these heirloom collections and immortalize your past. So these skins are sick, the heirloom collection pack is way overpriced and people are rightfully angry. I'm not going to buy this, not worth it for me. I bought actual in-person Tenocon stuff and I'm broke as hell now. Like, it looks great. Look, F Frost, Mag, beautiful. They have an about, right? You can watch the trailer. The issue is it's a FOMO end of the year 10th anniversary skin purchase. It'll never show up again. So maybe I'll buy it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But the insane price of 92 Canadian dollars for two skins, right? And then you do get this 400 platinum as well as do you get like Regal Aya? But that's the thing. People do not want six Regal Aya and they do not want 400 platinum if it's gonna boost the price of one of these packs, right? DE really needs to stop being rude about some of their collections like this. Just sell the FOMO skins, right? And the accessories. Don't add a bunch of junk bloatware like Regal Aya and Platinum. Let people buy those on their own because the price of 92 Canadian, this is legitimately just buy it if you're a whale and have a lot of money to burn. Other than that, it is not worth it. It's skins, so like, I guess it's worth it if it's worth it to you, of course, but I'm just saying like, this kind of rude, okay? Kind of rude. And a lot of people are just so angry. I agree with them. It's It sucks, and I might make a full video talking about it and going over it because like, it's just so rough, but I don't want this to be the longest video, so yeah. Sadly, they put that as their first thing. Um, that was a little awkward. Now, on to the other hype updates, hey Ruben, which were actually really great. First, we had Whisper in the Walls, Winter 2023. So this is the next, next update. Okay, keep that in mind. We'll have an October update, and then this will be the winter update, in theory. Coming to all platforms this winter, Whispers in the Wall will drop you into a high-raising conflict rife with shocking revelations that will shake the origin system to its core. I will do a full reaction video looking at this, probably do that on stream. I'm just incredibly tired, so we're taking things slowly. There's a billion videos I want to make just looking at and talking about the new stuff. So yeah, we're busy beavers, right? Again, we're playing it in the background, so no need to really play it here, right? It's picking up right where we clicked off. Oh yeah, Mr. Warframe guy has a great little abridged video, so moi. I believe a lot of Warframe creators, uh, day after Tenocon, are at Tenocon and doing like uh, walkthroughs with Digital Extreme, so that's kind of fun. Maybe, maybe I'll <clears throat> start DMing and begging and be like, guys, I could be a Warframe creator for next year. I create Warframe. I don't know. Got to find out if they like me or not, but that's okay. <laughs> in this new story-driven cinematic quest, you'll be caught in the middle of a deadly battle between Albrecht Intradi, one of the Origin uh, System's most brilliant minds, and the unknowable man in the wall. The board is set and the pieces are moving. Can you put it all together in time, Tenno? Naturally, you won't be fighting unarmed either. Hold fast against the dangers littered through the Albrechts and Trotty's secret laboratory with an all-new secondary weapon class, the Otherworldly Grimoire. That's right, you're a wizard, Harry. They're finally giving you magic books. Oh my god. Warframe, next level. We're finally adding in magic frame. So honestly, not mad at that. 
Whisper in the Wall, Wall introduced the Murmur new faction, a brand new faction created by the Man in the Wall, along with a reworked expanded Necromech enemy faction. No matter how you do battle, the forces arrayed against you have never been more fearsome, right? That's pretty sweet. And we had this entire Warframe 1999 hype. This reminded me, obviously, it was like a shout out and like very much dark sectory, but it also very much reminded me of like a G mod with all of the computer enemies and like the uh, old fashioned computer shenanigans, right? It it's like. It's like a mixture of so many different things. They had great music. I think uh, afterwards I was like, oh God, yeah, it was Nine Inch Nails, right? It was mwah, beautiful. And I think for the trailer of this one, technically I'm in it and everyone at Tenocon is in it, right? Because they put in us screaming like 10987654321 and then uh, something like that. So I think everyone's at Tenocon who yelled is technically in there, but I mean, like, ah, whatever, it's cool. Long before the old war, the deeds of Albert Contrati have cast an ominous lingering shadow over the origin system. What is his story? What is his story? Learn more about the secrets in Warframe 1999. We'll probably do a video uh, walking through and taking a look at the trailer for this, because it's only like six minutes. It's really good. I might get hit with a copyright strike, though, instantly, because Nine Inch Nails, so that sucks, but that's life. Then we have Abyss of Dagath, which will be, that's right, the next Warframe. A haunting new Warframe update arrives this October, Tenno. Hear the story of Dagath, the tw uh, 54th Warframe, and a new Nabra story from the Intradi Grandmother and Master Dagath, new blade and whip weapon type, right? Sweet. Abyss of Degoth will also serve various quality of life upgrades to improve your Warframe experience, including, these are great, Hydroid re Rework, Focus Acquisition Overhaul, and more, right? We're gonna have Companions Forever Revivable buffed up. There's gonna be great things coming, okay? Finally, Companions won't suck. New Kavat, stuff like that. There's gonna be a lot of stuff. I don't know if that's all coming here or like later on, but still, awesome. We finally have cross save details, I know. Thank God. <laughs> At long last, the full Warframe experience across all platforms is within reach. Development team is aiming to release cross-save in 2023. This feature will allow you to access your account on every platform, taking your master rank, focus, rewards, equipment, and more whenever you want to play. Stay tuned for final release date announcement in coming months. So, plan is right, 2023. I don't see how they can't hit that now, but hey, I believe they can do it. Hopefully, please. Next, we have Warframe coming in iOS 2024. There's really not much to say about this, so I'm not, I don't really want to read across this. It's just Warframe Mobile is going iOS on 2024, hopefully earlier rather than later. Okay, if you pre-order already on the live App Store, special bonus incentive, anyone who pre-orders ahead of launch will receive the Bombic Sindana and a three-day affinity booster. This is obviously so that everyone can like put it on their wish list pre-order, right? And it just bumps up the numbers for when it releases, obviously. It's a good marketing tactic, obviously. There are pre-order login one day one bonuses. Hey, I could technically download this on my wife's phone and get her to pre-order. I just don't think I care. So I'm probably gonna skip that. I'll wait if there's ever an Android version. If not, like, yeah, it's okay. Like Warframe Mobile is good for people who would use mobile and are more obviously mobile and out and about. I'm a content creator who lives at my home. So I play a little bit of games on my phone, but not really all that much. So not for me, but this is obviously a really good thing. And it will only bring more players to Warframe because the mobile market is huge. So can't wait for this release on a pure, health of Warframe scale, right? It'll be good for the game. That's just how it is, and I can't wait. Then we have Dog Days. This is back, Dog Days, until September 13th at 10 a.m. ET. I might do a full Dog Days video where we just do all of Dog Days to completion. Maybe I'll just upload that as a stream highlight. It's hard to say for sure, but you know, that's just kind of how that is. So I'm all for no Dog Days and all the loot that comes with it, but uh, we'll have to wait until I make a full Dog Days video because there's too much stuff. There's too much stuff. There's too much stuff. I have to check out Barrow, Dog Days, all the trailers, and then probably a handful of other videos just yelling about things. It's like uh, crazy, crazy. Next Prime is Grendel Prime. Uh, most people already knew this if you pay attention to the rotation, but a lot of people were coping and hoping, hopi, hopium-ing, sorry, that it would be Gauss Prime. And sorry to say, but I believe Grendel came out and then Gauss. That's what, you know, the release order always is. So this was expected, 
but we should be getting Gauss. Gauss Prime next, because it was Wisp, Grendel, Gauss, and then female frames again, because it goes in the order of two, 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 you know, two male, two female, two male, two female. So yeah, that's usually how it goes, technically. Latest Prime is Grendel Prime, right? This time around Grendel Prime, Xylocke Prime, and Maceter Prime. Okay, so it is Xylocke Prime. I think I said that in my other video, but I, I wasn't 100% sure, but Grendel, Xylocke, Maceter, awesome. Login Dex Reward Bonuses. I'm also gonna like tweet out and just shout out on the socials about this, but log in before December 31st and you will get the full breadth of Dex skins. I could actually probably bring up my picture of it right now because it's just on my desktop. And you can see, like, look at all of the sweet loot you get. It's because it's Operator and Drifter. So technically you need like one and then the second. So pretty cool, all things considered. I also have to do a Tenocon rundown, just showing off all the pictures I took. If you know, if you're on the socials or not, I'll try to upload the awesome mechs, uh, the Moa and the Roomba and the other little mech on the ground. They were so cute. I think it was Hacksmith as well as a uh, creator that I cannot remember for the Moa. I, it's awesome, okay? All in all, it was amazing. But names are all over the place casually said hi to a ton of people right and i just walked around i did not at all make like a point to going around and talking to people i more so came casually as like a the, just a viewer slash content creator to take my own pictures and live tweet about it and like live shit post it was great i'm antisocial and humans scare me so i didn't go around talking to like any dev people or anything like that because humans are terrifying. I think I said hi to Taylor because I picked up my badge and she was there. And then other than that, I just walked around the convention and if anyone said hi, I'd say hi. And if they wanted a picture, go for it, of course. Maybe one day I'll come back to Tenocon and make it more of like a point to try to say hi to everyone. But I was much more this time going just to take pictures and enjoy Tenocon 10th anniversary as Tenocon 10th anniversary. Uh, I hate lines though, so I'm not like a massive convention person because conventions are like just long waits, chilling in line to take pictures and do all of the different panels. So, you know, it's hit or miss. I've been to a handful of conventions. They're not my favorite thing, but I'm really glad I went to the Warframe one because it was hella fun. But still, lines make me sad. And this convention, sadly, the worst thing about it was how badly managed their lines were. And like people were everywhere. You could barely tell half the lines what they were actually going to. It was a little goofy. It wasn't the worst, but I mean, I think everyone can admit the lines were a little goofy. So eh, it is what it is, right? Prime Resurgent Tenocon round. Ooh, Mag and Frost. This one's like pretty whatever, but like Mag Frost Prime Tenocon stuff. Cool. It makes sense because uh, the heirloom collection. So if you get the heirloom collection, you'll get the Regal Aya so you can buy them. Makes sense. It just sucks that you are forced to buy, again, Regal Aya and Platinum when you just might want the skins. I wish Warframe would stop doing FOMO bundles. And if they want to do FOMO, do FOMO items individually or bundle the skins with the accessories as two separate things, right? Like skins and then skins and accessories. But stop adding on Regal Aya and Aya because a lot of endgame fashion frame players probably don't want that and they're just making us sad, right? So please don't force people to buy $92 Canadian uh, skin packs for a ton of Regal Aya and Aya because or sorry, Regal Aya and Platinum, because it just makes us a little depressed. So, hey, that's my take on it. I don't want to buy the skins because of that. And it's expensive, and I bought way too much stuff at Tenocon, so I'm a broke boy. Congrats to all the creators who are live streaming. I think I saw Brozyme live streaming. They probably made thousands of dollars that day, so good job, everyone. Like, on Twitch AdSense, YouTube videos, everything like that. Congratulations. I hope, like, the trip is all paid for and everything because mwah, it was a lot of fun, right? And it's always good when everyone makes money because uh, <laughs> being, uh, being broke is not easy. This was a very expensive trip probably for everyone involved, other than uh, people who invited and paid for, right? So, yeah, good job, everybody. It was a fun trip, fun trip. Gift of the Lotus Umbra Forma, right? Yeah, you can grab that, log in for the next uh, handful of 24 hours. So this is pretty much gone by the time I'm uploading this video. I'm not gonna timestamp that, okay? <clears throat> not timestamping that shit. We have the Soul Frame Demo plus Sizzle video. 
The Soul Frame demo was awesome. It was very beautiful. It's pretty much a soul, like an RPG Souls-like, but more Warframe uh, aesthetic, right? And they want to go with the nature aspect, so less depresso, well, more depresso nature, but it looks like you are going out and fixing and healing the world. You're healing nature, so you're fixing everything. So less depresso. It's Dark Souls, but you're making everything happy instead of everything sad no matter what. So I mean, pretty cool. It has a lot of systems, so we're gonna take a look at this and go over everything. It's a 31 minute video. 31 minutes long, right? So that'll be pretty wild, but we'll try to do that. There's a lot of cool stuff. Oh, register today, everybody. Register today. I got to register. So remember, register for Soul Frame if you're curious. Tenocon merch is available, and that's cool. I, hilariously enough, I didn't buy any Tenocon merch in person because I hated the line so bad, and by the time I got in line, I was going to not be able to buy the things I wanted, so I legitimately bought plushies, I bought sweatpants, and I bought the art book, right? I bought the Thumper plush, the art book, and the sweatpants online because the lines were so bad, I had to have, like, prioritized uh, getting those very first things, and I just wasn't about that life, so I just bought it online and it'll ship in October or something, so... <laughs> hey, life hack, if, uh, if you don't want to deal with lines at Tenocon, just pay a little bit extra for shipping. But hey, it is what it is. I wouldn't even gotten this stuff. The Lotus statues sold out instantly, but I didn't really want to get those because the art book was expensive enough with the floofs and the sweatpants. So I'm broke again. Welcome everybody. It's Bupsker the Poor here. And we are broke as shit from Tenocon, right? It is what it is. It was a fun trip though. And we got a lot of sweet pictures and a lot of content out of it. So we'll try, we'll try to recover the thousands of dollars we lost. <laughs> via making videos and streams and chilling with everyone. <laughs> but that's just kind of how that goes, right? Um, trips are fun and they're a lot. London was great. I had so much fun looking at just like the greenery and food of London, just walking around the park and whatnot, checking things out. And I was only really there for like three days, so I was more casual about it. And then I t my flight, I got four, three hours or four hours of sleep last night because my flight left at like six in the morning, which meant I had to wake up early to get ready and then like go to the airport and yeah, I got like three, four hours of sleep. I'm dead on the inside right now, okay? But that's okay. So yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> and finally, the partnership and influencer promotions. That's like all of the, I think a ton of Warframe creators were like brought out, right? I don't know if they were, yeah, I assume they were like paid for, fly, flied out in a hotel, all that jazz, or maybe like only some of them were. Who knows? I'm not a Warframe creator. I just yell at clouds. Warframe, <laughs> please. <laughs> so it was good. I saw a lot of people just walking around. Oh, I think I saw Disfusional with her sweet cosplay. Uh, what was it? Was it like, was it the Zaku cosplay? Oh no, I gotta, I'm gonna in real time quickly take a look. I'm like, I can't remember what the skin is technically, or is it like Arushu Kor or Korra? Oh my God, I'm so bad with it, but it was a sweet cosplay. Oh shit, I didn't even realize she won the cosplay contest. So makes sense. I just cannot for the life of me, remember what this skin is. Okay, it's Lotus Amaga cosplay. Oh my god. Yeah, my brain is mush. I'm I'm done for. Oh god. Rip. Brain is too mushed. It was an honor to be joined at Tenocon by amazing partners like Lightning Cosplay. Uh, that was Lightning Cosplay. I think she was Lotus, right? Uh, Lo Hacksmith, JMDF, Trolley, Love Sack, HB Omen, and more. The, they were on the show floor. There was awesome stuff. Thank you for joining Tenocon, everyone. So that was most of Tenocon, but I have a ton of pictures and videos to show you going over what Tenocon was like IRL. So I will upload my gigs of pictures and videos onto my computer and we can take a look at those in another time. The one thing I will show you ahead of time though is I love them so much. This, These were my favorite and I think a lot of people's favorites were the adorable mechs and the MOA. I think it was Hacksmith who made the like mechs and then ugh, there's a cosplayer who was the MOA, right? It was great. Like they were so sick. I just have to try and actually find them. But I know everyone really loved the mechs. Look at them. Look at them. I'll upload them as a YouTube short. 
and stuff because I think it's already in vertical. So look at the MOA. And then I went over to her and ah, she noticed and she, she did the MOA thing. It was so cute. It was 10 out of 10, right? The little guy, the little Roomba chasing him. Oh my God. They make noises like and then she like did the thing with the MOA. Okay, it was it was adorable. I loved it. I think a lot of people loved the mechs. The, I had to find the Roomba, so I was damn happy I did. So 10 out of 10, this was sweet. A lot of great cosplays and stuff, but my brain is mush, so I've probably said a billion things wrong. I barely got a lot of sleep, okay? I can't sleep on flights that easily. And I had a lot of coffee, so yeah, we're a mess. My dog and girlfriend are sleeping uh, because they have the ability to sleep. My dog is right now just chilling right beside me, as you can see, adorable fluffy corgi. So that's it for this video. Go check out a ton of the Warframe stuff and all the content creators. Everyone's uploading a bunch of Warframe pictures on the socials, videos on the socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, right? Go check everyone out and then I'll go over a video going over Tenocon, going over all the stuff I got. I caught a couple, got a couple business cards from people, so that was pretty cool. Disfusional had like real hype looking business cards uh, handing out as well as her uh, glyph as like a sticker, so that was pretty adorable. But I was just kind of walking around and trying not to tell anyone I was Pupsker because I just wanted to experience it and walk around. It was great. Only a handful of people like stopped me and said hi and took pictures. So it was nice being uh, very casually at Tenocon. So I don't know if I'll go again, but I'm glad I went to the 10th anniversary and it's probably worth it, especially if you're in the area because they did a great job. I just hate the lines and I'm a little weird with conventions, right? So that's it. Good job to your boy Arthur with his AK. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Sub like and all that jazz and I'll try to get this video up when I get it up.